Et actuellement, on est très confédé, comme je vais vous avez dit, 7 ans sur plus de grandes pages. Et ça traduit clairement le volume de sa production scientifique et aussi la qualité de ses contributions. Puisqu'il a été classé premier dans sa spécialité en sociologie des médias en termes d'impact international par l'Académie suédoise en décembre 2010. Euh, donc euh, voilà, il a connu son doctorat en 1977, euh, en, je pense, à l'université de New York. C'est ça, doctorat, voilà. Et il a été habilité en médias et communication à l'université de Stockholm depuis 1985. Il a plusieurs euh, euh, publications, des livres notamment. Voilà, euh, on peut voilà, citer euh, The Political, Political Web, Participation Media and Alternative Democracy. Euh, C'était en UK, United Kingdom. C'était publié en Grande-Bretagne. Aussi, on peut citer Young Citizens and New Media, Learning of Democratic Participation. C'était publié à New York. Je peux citer, il y a devant moi 20 euh, bouquins, donc euh, je vais faire euh, une sélection. Euh, concernant ses activités professionnelles internationales, il a été euh, chercheur, euh, professeur invité par l'Université de Paris 3, euh, euh, avril-mai 2009, aussi par l'Université de Grenoble, en janvier-mars 2009, euh, aussi par Einberg School of Communication, University of Pennsylvania, United States. Il a connu plusieurs prix, comme euh, vous avez dit, dont notamment, je peux citer deux, le plus important, en novembre 2010, il a eu le prix de la Fondation Walgren pour ses contributions au champ des médias et communication. Et en décembre 2010, il a été, comme j'avais dit, classé premier euh, professeur suédois euh, par l'Académie suédoise. Euh, suédoise pardon. Et je passe la parole euh, directement à notre cher Peter Peterson, qui lui aura un peu de temps pour, euh, pour des rectifications. Merci, merci. Euh, yes. Bonjour tous. Euh, Est-ce que le microphone ça marche Ça marche, ça marche. Bon. Euh, Je suis très content, très honoré d'être ici euh, et euh, très reconnaissant pour l'invitation. Notamment, ce centre Twitter me semble être un exemple impressionnant d'Alzheimer, de la société civile. Euh, une sorte essentielle pour le développement de, de la démocratie. Euh, euh, aussi, euh, D'être ici en Tunisie à ce moment-là, c'est quelque chose pour moi euh, inspirant, excitant. Euh, la révolution tunisienne, c'est important pour évidemment la Tunisie, mais c'est aussi un exemple euh, positif, un exemple encourageant pour euh, toute la région et euh, dans le monde globalement. Euh, on peut dire dans les médias globales, euh, comment le cri de la Tunisie de Scola est acheté juste ici. Bien sûr, il reste beaucoup de choses à faire, des défis, etc. Mais euh, le récit, avec, surtout avec la Constitution, c'est quelque chose de tellement important. Et euh, comme je dis, une inspiration euh, mondiale. Je veux m'allier avec euh, les remarques de mes collègues, euh, Mourad et Nadir, euh, concernant la démocratie, euh, l'importance que peut entrer dans les, euh, les contextes de la vie quotidienne, les circonstances locales, euh, et aussi l'importance, euh, comme j'ai déjà mentionné, de, de, le rôle des médias, euh, open data, open government, euh, de nos jours, euh, cette perspective, ce, ces efforts sont essentiels. Aujourd'hui, je voudrais parler d'une question de la démocratie qui devient de plus en plus pertinente euh, pour les citoyens, 
Euh, le World Web explique tous les médias sociaux pour la participation. Depuis l'émergence de l'Internet il y a 20 ans, la discussion, les débats concernant le, le, sur le thème des médias euh, numériques et l'espace public, euh, et la participation, la participation et la démocratie augmentent. Mais rien reste immobile. Euh, la société, la technologie, les modes d'engagement, euh, les circonstances politiques, les crises, euh, tout se change. Et selon les manières spécifiques pour chaque situation concrète, euh, il y a des tendances euh, générales, euh, sans doute. Euh, et ces tendances plus globales euh, pour lesquelles je m'adresse ici. Évidemment, c'est, euh, à mon avis, c'est euh, important de connaître ces motifs. Mais c'est aussi le sens de pourquoi les appliquer sur les propres circonstances, euh, de bien analyser et comprendre euh, sa propre situation. Mes expériences, mes horizons euh, sont ancrés dans le, le contexte de l'Europe et euh, des États-Unis. Je ne suis pas expert de la Tunisie, alors je laisse la tâche euh, d'appliquer ces perspectives analytiques à vous. Mais j'espère que ce petit conférence puisse offrir des outils conceptuels euh, relevants. Bon, alors je vais aborder la question de comment comprendre la relation entre les médias sociaux et les démocraties, surtout l'aspect de la participation civique. Euh, comme vous avez sans doute noté, mon français est un peu faible. Euh, ça va, ça va. Ça va. Improvisé. Euh, mais euh, alors, euh, je fais le plus près le discours euh, en anglais. Mais j'ai préparé une présentation de PowerPoint avec l'assistance de mon cher collègue, euh, Juan. Euh, mais surtout, nous avons l'assistance des, des traducteurs euh, pour faciliter la communication. Bon. Même mes filles se moquent de mes capacités technologiques. <rire> bon, un, un petit sommet. Euh, je commence avec euh, les délais de la démocratie parce que je trouve que c'est tellement important d'ancrer de des, des analyses dans, dans les conjonctures contemporaines, euh, pas dans des abstractions. Euh, alors, euh, après, j'ai fait une petite soumère des débats euh, concernant les rôles des, euh, des médias sociaux, les, euh, les arguments pour et les contre. Euh, et troisième, je veux souligner que le web, euh, en général, et moi j'ai le, le terme de web euh, un peu euh, général, j'ai les technologies insulaires, les, les portables, etc., etc. Mais ce que je veux insister, c'est que le web s'est euh, formé par plusieurs des conditions. Ce n'est pas un terrain neutre. Il, il y a des, des facteurs qu'il faut faire attention. Et euh, finalement, les, les réflexions euh, finales. Bon. In English, I would say, so we shot the transition. <laughs> uh, 
In, in English, I would say snapshots of the present, just uh, some background contextualization. sound like uh, some uh, utopian uh, future. And what I want to underscore is that democracy is an eternal project. There's never a, uh, a final point when you arrive and say, oh, now we've arrived, great, we can relax. Uh, no, always a struggle, a continuous struggle. There are always forces that threaten democracy, even when it seems fully formed and existent. The character and the nature of democratic struggles are shaped by circumstances and social, cultural, political arrangements. Um, and as these change, the character of participation, civil society, etc., also change. And we see positive developments in democracy. More countries are more or less democratic today than 30 years ago. But many dangers uh, exist also. Today, there are more countries that are more or less presumed democratic than 30 years ago. For example, in Latin America, you know, there have been these positive developments. More countries have become democratic. Okay. Uh, but there's still much which threatens. So, one of the 
One of the dangers or problems facing the established democracies is a decline in participation. Citizens feel it's not worth the effort. Uh, the citizens feel the politicians, the, the political parties are not responsive. They become frustrated, they become cynical, they disengage. Citizens become frustrated and cynical because they feel they have no influence. The politicians, the parties do not listen to them. So they become frustrated and they disengage. They say, why bother? Uh, uh, an atmosphere of depoliticalization emerges. Uh, questions are not framed as political, they become technical, administrative questions, and people become disengaged, depoliticized. It's important to mention also the role the political, ideological role of what is often called neoliberalism. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> and the, I think an important thing is the, this, this way of thinking is applied not just to the private sector, but also to the public sector. The logic of privatization, commercialization, making profit. And it's destructive, particularly in the public sector. Okay, let's move on. So the crises are deepening in uh, Europe, particularly in the South. Much social devastation resulting from austerity measures by the EU and uh, global financial crises. Uh, authoritarian tendencies uh, are found to be increasing even in the older democracies. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of anti-democratic tendencies. But happily, there's another side. There's another story to be told. A renewal of engagement, a uh, reactivation of uh, citizen participation. 
We see it in uh, various social movements, activist groups, networks, community uh, activism, uh, which are confronting the crisis at various levels, municipal, national, regional. And مجال المشاركة والحركات الاجتماعية الجديدة والنشطاء الجمع الجمعيون هم نشطاء في الحقيقة وأسسوا ما يسمى الالتيناتيف ديموكراسي الديموكراسية الالتيناتيف العربية هي الديمقراطية البديلة هذه ترجمة ال 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 العلمية لها شكرا. so there are these encouraging signs of new participation but they also include Unfortunately, um, dangerous or negative examples. Uh, if you're looking at the web, you will also find extreme right-wing, racist, uh, supranationalist, indeed even fascist groups. So it's not just the good guys um, online. نجم نلقاو مختلف الاتجاهات من الاقصى اليمين الاقصى اليسار فاشيا مختلف الاتجاهات السياسيه بالموازاه مع الحركات الاجتماعيه التقدميه يمكن ان تستعمل انترنت فاشيا ولا لم يقل لها بي يجب ان اكون امينا لكن هو قال فاشيا quick reflection on the concept of participation. Uh, it's often used casually, uh, informally. It's used in advertising. Uh, participate in the shampoo revolution. <laughs> but I want to emphasize two dimensions. <laughs> So, <laughs> 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 Access to the media, to the web is important. Interaction is also important. Uh, these are necessary, but they're not sufficient. Participation involves, at some level, an element, a dimension of power sharing. Otherwise, it is a uh, uh, false mode of participation, not genuine democracy. المشاركة الفعلية عبر الإنترنت هي وقت العبد يدخل يعني يشارك فعليا ويساهم في أفكاره واقتراحاته. يمكن أن تلاحظوا كذلك أن عملية التفاعل في الإنترنت نفس الفكرة اللي كان يؤكد عليها هي تعبر عن نشاط مدني ولكن الدخول الى الانترنت هو هو دونك الانتراكسيون سون نيسيسير مي مي نيسيفيس با دونك هي لازمه ولكن لا تكفي عند الدخول الى الانترنت بدون مثلا برنامج بدون مشروع بدون هدف لا يعني شيئا او استعمالها فوالا دونك الاستعمالات التي ليس لها معنى <تصفيق> So back then you would say, oh, I think I will go online this afternoon. 
something separate from one's ordinary existence. Today, uh, more and more, and especially with the younger generations, our lives are integrated with the social media. We live our lives partly through social media. But when we begin to look at uh, the web and social media, uh, it's important that we understand that they are integrated into the larger structures of society, power relations, economic relations, ideological currents. And just a little detail, I'm talking about social media generally. Of course, one in concrete situations has to be specific because Twitter is not the same as YouTube, it's not the same as Instagram, etc. قال انه يحكي على الفكره دي جنرال ما بصفه عامه ما غير ما غير ما غير ما ما يعطي اكزامبل واللي يفصل بين يوتيوب مثل فيسبوك مختلف الشبكات الاجتماعيه. So let's look at the argument. Why should we be optimistic about their role? The first thing to underscore is that they facilitate what I call horizontal communication through society. Uh, and horizontal communication is civic communication. And what's the first thing an authoritarian regime does? It tries to cut civic communication. No meetings, no gathering in the streets, no discussion groups, silencing the citizens. So, these, the horizontal communication of these media uh, are an important element of democratic life. Uh, and when using them, the more you use them, the more you master them. Uh, only that is. And this is an empowering experience. You feel Oh, I, I can do it. I can use these tools and I can achieve things with them. <laughs> and these tools are becoming less expensive, easier to use, and people are using them creatively, uh, designing new ways to uh, employ them. And uh, so, in the age of the older age of mass media, we spoke of audiences one-way communication we receive. Now, it's more two-way. So users become also producers. And we have words, new, rather ugly words, like producers. En français, les producteurs. Uh, but, uh, 
اخذنا وانا عاتقني الاستاذ بيتر لفهم ما يحدث على الشبكات هو مفهوم الفاعل المستعمل ال ال فوالا البرودوي يوتيليزاتور فوالا المنتج فاعل فوالا هذا هذا المفهوم هو السيد بيتر اقترحه هو كمفهوم اجراءي Let me assure you, you can live, you can live a meaningful life without using that word. Okay. So, more arguments. Wow, the lab, terrific, great for participation and democracy. And they are. Uh, changing the way people engage. It's easier to engage. Uh, they're changing the infrastructure of the public sphere. Uh, and they permit, they make possible a much wider range of political views and ideologies than the mass media with their rather narrow spectrum. But of course, it's not just that simple. There are difficulties, there are problems. So, uh, we have to be sociologically sober and look with a critical eye and uh, not be seduced by uh, the, the joy of techno-optimism. So, for example, what do people do online? They socialize, I spent my weekend, um, they, uh, they follow fan stuff, uh, download movies, music. Uh, politics is way low down on the list of activities. الشبان اليوم معناها اللي هي الانترنت يحلوا فيسبوك شبكات اجتماعيه ويتشارجوا في الاغنيه وفي الافلام وكل لكن السياسه هي اللوطه يعني جوست في الاغتنام. And there's so much stuff out there, uh, entertainment consumption, which is much more fun than politics and democracy and all that boring stuff. And just because, just because somebody gets a computer with an internet link doesn't mean that they're going to say, wow, now I'm going to become an active citizen. <laughs> مش مجرد امتلاك حاسوب واستعماله معناها تنجم يبقى عند So online, even in the public sphere, political realm, the, the terrain is so dense, there's so much competition for attention, it gets easily confusing. 
What should I focus on? Oh, this looks fun. Oh, that looks interesting. So that's one, uh, one problem. Mm -hmm. If you, if, there's a human tendency for people to gather two people who are like themselves. I like you, you like me, because you're like me and I'm like you. Now this is fine for social life, but in the democratic public sphere you get these little cocoons, these little islands of discourse. Now I agree with you and you agree with me. But if somebody comes from a different point of view, I'm shocked. And gradually, perhaps, one loses the capacity to engage in argument and rational discussion. Social media are largely organized along commercial logic. And I won't go into detail, but basically this logic involves gathering information on all the users, analyzing and selling this information for commercial purposes. So just about everything we do online leaves electronic traces about our personal behavior, our viewpoints, our patterns of living, etc. And not just the commercial interests, we now know um, after the revelations by Edward Snowden that governments, government agencies, particularly the National Security Agency of the US, has access to all digital traffic. There is no longer any sure privacy online. There's no longer any uh, guaranteed privacy online. National Security Agency. NSA. So these circumstances are dreadful, very problematic for democracy. Okay. Very quickly about Google. Google is not a uh, social medium as such, 
but it's a major actor on the web and defines much of how the web is used. Google is a fantastic accomplishment, very useful, and we all use it. Um, but problems arise about its democratic accountability. It's becoming so powerful, there's no real democratic control. It's becoming a global actor in the whole realm of information, not just online, but Google Books, etc. So Google is organizing the way we access, store, uh, use information, what information is available, etc. This book, why don't you look at these? And this information is so, but also this information tends to oh, microphone 2.0. <laughs> so uh, increasingly what is happening, people say who are searching the same concept will begin to get different answers based on their personal profile. What happens to shared public knowledge? Google is a profile that Google. يعرف هذه الاستعمالات ويقول الاستاذ بيتر ان شخصين مختلفين يبحثان عن نفس المعلومه تقدم بطريقه مختلفه حسب بروفيل حسب الاستوريك اللي تستعمله وهذا من الخطوره في مكان هذا تعريف يعني انا مش من الخطوره في مكان ما يشتغل يولي كبر عليك معناها انت تحب تلوش على حاجه واللي هو يقترح لك Just a few words about Facebook Facebook is your friend <laughs> but of course, you know, like Google, Facebook is in many ways fantastic and again has a democratic potential, but you have to be aware of the fact that Facebook owns all the information you provide it. It's theirs, it's their property, not yours. <laughs> And one might say, oh, it's just for commercial purposes, it doesn't matter, but uh, in a few years, maybe some facts about you might be interesting and useful 
in a damaging way in another context. وبلاش يقع اللجوء لهذه المعلومات معلومات سريه ولا شخصيه حول الاشخاص للقيام بضرر ولا باضرار يعني يستعملها سلبيا نهار من النهارات مخزونه معلومات وتحت تفشيل عليها It's the same logic I, I've got nothing to hide so what? <laughs> okay um, So in terms of um, participation and the public sphere, uh, I mentioned earlier the, uh, the cocoons, the, uh, the small social islands, which become problematic for, for the public sphere in the, in the larger, uh, say, in, in a national situation. Uh, we have like buttons, but no dislike buttons. And, what happens to the notion of friendship online? Um, people can receive a message. Uh, your friend Fred wants you to join him on Facebook. Oh. So I send an email to Fred. Oh, thank you for the invitation. Oh, I didn't invite you. Facebook took the initiative based on an analysis of your two profiles. Um, تقدم فيسبوك اقتراح لكي يكون صديقك وهذا ليس بالضرورة أمر إيجابي بالنسبة لشخص. So you're using Facebook, but increasingly Facebook is using you. Facebook has become the mo one of the most profitable terrains for advertising. Uh, and if you go, um, if you go to Amazon Books and search for books on social media, ninety-five percent of these books are about advertising, publicity, marketing, yes. etc. So be aware of this when you use Facebook for democratic participation. A more general issue is that participation uh, in politics via the web, social media, is very easy, it's convenient, and there's something seductive about that. And it's getting to the point where I've encountered students whose only mode of participation in politics is through the web and social media. <laughs> And what's the problem with this? Well, uh, it becomes an easy, what I call, comfort zone. You're comfortable doing that, uh, but you become less and less comfortable going to a meeting, engaging face-to-face -face discussions, and 
while you're engaging online, it becomes a little difficult to go on. You can say, I'll go on eBay and buy something. Uh, the, the question is that commitment and politics participation requires commitment. It requires work. It's difficult at times. And the seductive consumerist uh, disposition that the web encourages uh, can sabotage political commitment. رفاه مغلوب عن كونكور إلوزوار رفاه مغلوطة لماذا؟ لأنه سهل جدا أن تتعامل في الفيسبوك مع أفكار معينة دون الذهاب دون أن يشارك الفعلية لا في مظاهرة ولا في اجتماع عام أو اجتماع سياسي هذا ما يسميه في هذه الرفاه كونكور اللي هو مغلوب وهي في الفيسبوك الذي في وعيق العلاقات المباشرة وهو أمر سلبي بالنسبة لي للنشاط المفرد شكرا well, to pull this discussion together, to round up here, uh, these developments uh, suggest that we're entering a historically new period in the um, in, in, of democracy. It's a new kind of infrastructure, new modes, modalities of participation. There are promises and there are pitfalls, traps, dangers. The, the alternative democracy movements are encouraging we must realize that they are, now I'm talking about, say, in, in uh, Western Europe, uh, they are limited. It's a small minority, but hopefully it will grow. As the crisis grows, participation grows. We see in Spain, uh, the indignados, uh, in Portugal, Greece, more people are becoming engaged, they're participating, because they feel they have to. The situation is becoming intolerable. And here again, the web is useful, but it won't be our savior. And uh, we should be in the Western Europe, Western Europe, especially in Spain, and Yes. Well, it, say in Sweden and the North, participation in alternative democracy is not as intensive. But it's because the crisis is not yet as big as it is in the South. It's very clear. Thank you very much. So, he says that in fact, the times in the Western Europe, in the Western Europe, are very small. And that's why these social movements, these social movements. مش ليس لا مبرر وإنما قليلة بينما في بلدان الجنوب مثل إسبانيا إلى آخره هناك أزمات كبيرة الـ 2008 هناك أزمة مالية كبيرة في أوروبا وهذا ما خلق حراك العالم الافتراضي كما حلق هذا تعليقي أنا سمعوني كما خلق حراك يسميه الأستاذ بيتر الديمقراطية البديلة مع تجيش أن نفهم أتارة في الديمقراطية مع ديمقراطية بديلة شكرا شكرا so. One of my main messages here is that there's no technological solution for democracy because its dilemmas are not about technology. They're about power relationships. Um, and there's a way of talking about technology that solves all our problems, just modern, and it's the way of the future. Well, yes, in a sense, but ultimately, uh, as a an activist at Tahrir Square in Cairo said to me when I was there three years ago, it's, it's not Twitter that's making the revolution, it's not the smartphone that's making the revolution, it's we who are making the revolution.
So these media are indeed indispensable, but they aren't sufficient. One has to think, act, and plan politically. Uh, use them as tools, but don't think that they're going to solve your problems. Uh, and for those struggling for democracy in newer ones like uh, Tunisia, older ones in Northern Europe, uh, there remains plenty to do to support and develop democracy. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> الفكرة الأخيرة صحيح أن الوسائل وسائل التكنولوجيا عندها أهمية لكن تيم ما يقتصرش الأمر على هذايا درك لازم مبادرة من أفراد دونك ما هي إلا وسائل تعال شكرا 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 It is very good, and nous voulons remercier Monsieur Peter pour sa brillante participation, présentation. Voilà, nous passons la parole à la salle. Je préfère, donc, je préfère.